So now to my introduction of Chancellor Eloy Ortiz Oakley. And I want to start, as I was sort of thinking about what I was going to say, I was reminded, my, my, my dad, I, I remember two sayings that my dad just sort of always said, always said, and one of them was, where there is a will, there is a way. And when things have gotten difficult for me, I continue to recall that particular saying. I think that Eloy gets up every morning using that creed as his marching orders. Where there is a will, there is a way. He is best known for his innovative programs and policies that help students succeed in college. Eloy's trailblazing has been acknowledged through his appointments and his message is always the same. We can and we must redesign our educational institutions that keep our students at the center of every decision to ensure that they are successful. He's a member of a, a number of state and national organizations, including those that support student success for Latinx, black African-American students, and other historically underrepresented students as well. But the membership I just want to highlight is that the chancellor is also a card-carrying member of the NAACP. He, get, he gets extra points from me, from me, okay. But before I welcome Eloy Oakley, I'd like to share that he and I both started our educations at a local community college. He and I both understood and understand what it took to reach our goals, our aspirations, our dreams. I, wanna, I want to confirm for you, in case you don't know this, that it is, we are about wanting to remove those obstacles and those barriers for you. And so we want to hear from you this evening. We want to make certain that we're, listen, we're here to listen and for you to talk. So please stay for that portion. But before you do that, it is my pleasure to introduce the chancellor of the 115 California Community Colleges, serving more than 2.1 million students, Chancellor Eloy Ortiz Oakley. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for having us here. Thank you for welcoming us. And, uh, uh, some of you may know that I'm uh, from the Long Beach community, and if you know my um, NAACP chapter president, Naomi Rainey, you know why I'm a card-carrying member. <laughs> I had no choice, but it was an easy choice. Um, uh, seriously, um, it's um, a wonderful opportunity to be here with you all today. Thank you for coming out in numbers. Thank you for everyone who's here speaking. Um, this is truly an important issue for all of us, certainly a personal issue for me and my team at the Chancellor's Office, and I both feel, like many of you, tired and excited at the same time. I'm tired about talking about the same thing over and over and over and over and over again in my career, in my lifetime, in my community, but I'm also excited. I'm excited for what I see is a true window of opportunity to really shine a light on the hundreds of thousands, millions of students and community members that we have left behind historically, that now we have an opportunity to do something about. And I say that with both the understanding that many people have said the same thing and little has changed, but at the same time knowing that we have people like Pam Haynes and the people on the Black and African American Advisory Panel who believe the same that I do, that we do have a window of opportunity. And we have a system of higher education, the California Community Colleges, as a tool to get it done. And I commit to you as the chancellor, and I know I speak for all of our 72 chancellors in the system, all of our 114 presidents, we are committed to getting this done. 
this is priority number one. So let me just say a few things. First of all, I want to acknowledge again the members of the Black and African American Advisory Panel. I want to thank them for their leadership. We are here because of them. Uh, they have suggested it. Uh, they have encouraged it, and they want us to gather as much input as possible from people like you so that we can inform our office in our colleges on what we should be doing different or more of what we're doing today. Uh, as was mentioned, we are going across the state, gathering input. It's important that you give us as much of your thinking as possible. We're going to gather all that thinking, all that input, and pull it together and help inform our policies and our practices and our thinking. So it's very important to us that you give us every thought that you have, regardless of whether you think it is um, uh, important or not, whether you think it's uh, you're venting or not, we wanna hear from you. So let me just take a moment to tell you what the Chancellor's Office is doing right now. Uh, we uh, uh, authored what we call the Vision for Success is a strategic vision that the Board of Governors adopted in 2017. It lays out a clear focus on equity, equity and outcomes for students in California. And because the California Community Colleges have the largest share of students of color, it is increasingly important that we not only focus on this mission, on this goal, but we accomplish it. Um, Really, our vision for success is about three things. It's about social justice, it's about economic mobility, and it's about workforce development for our communities. And really, we're focused on, on two big issues. One, the current pipeline of students that's coming through our system and putting a clear focus on underserved, underrepresented communities, uh, we are leaning particularly hard into communities that have been left behind, communities of color, communities like the Central Valley, like the Inland Empire, who have historically been left behind. The other is we're focused on working families. And why do I say that? Working families, workers who are out there in the workforce, who are threatened, um, to be displaced by the changes in the economy, by automation, by artificial intelligence, by all the work that's happening to really change the face of our workforce. And it's interesting to me that at a time in our history where we are seeing greater numbers of our students achieving a high school diploma, we've now moved the goalpost on them. That high school diploma is not the same ticket anymore. We now have to ensure that our students have a post-secondary credential in order to compete in this economy. And this economy keeps changing. So we need to ensure that working families have access to good education as well. They're going to upskill. They're going to need to retool. They're going to need to continue to work and fight hard to keep good paying jobs because those continue to be eroded and they continue to go away. So that's our focus and the vision for success. Some of the good news that's on the horizon, first of all, you know, the state of California has the California College Promise, which ensures that all low-income students and all students who are going uh, to school who are first-time students and full-time students, their fees are waived. Um, Governor Newsom and the legislature proposed to extend that to a second year. We believe that that's a great message to send to all our communities, that going to community college, if you are low-income, or if you are willing to go full time and you're a first time student, you will not have to pay fees for your first two years. That's a great message. The second, and this is where we all need your help, is we are also proposing a major change to the Cal Grant system. That is the primary financial aid system in the state of California for California students. So many of you understand um, you know, the cost of going to college. But it's, again, interesting to me, and this is not to throw stones, but the system that has the least number of African Americans receives the greatest amount of funding through financial aid, the University of California. The system that has the greatest number of African American students and the greatest need, the greatest number of low-income students, students of color, receives the, less, the least amount of funding. We need to change that dynamic. 
And the Cal Grant system is there for our students. We need to expand Cal Grant for community college students. Community college students that are not traditional in the sense that they don't come to us right out of high school. Sometimes they come to us right out of high school. Sometimes they come to us five years down the line. And all the restrictions on the Cal Grant system ensure that our students do not receive that benefit. Less than 10% of California community college students receive access to the Cal Grant system. We need to change that. So we will be leaning on communities like this. <laughs> communities like this and leaders like we have here today to help us work with the legislature and work with this governor to ensure that the California community college students receive the benefits that they deserve and can pay for college in a way that allows them to go full time and allows them to complete in just a few years. So again, I wanna thank you all today for being here. I wanna thank you for all the work that um, you're gonna do over the next uh, hour or two and all the great input that you're gonna give us. We very much look forward to hearing from you. And again, thank you for coming out this evening and thank you for your continued support of the California Community Colleges. All right, thank you. Thank you, Chancellor. And as he mentioned about workforce development, which is huge at the community colleges, <clears throat> I'm reminded here at Los Rios, they are innovating. And actually, the Greater Sacramento Urban League, we have a partnership with Sac City College and supported by HealthNet, which, and I know that uh, Kelly Todd Griffin is here from HealthNet, to provide college credit certificate program in the community right in at the Urban League. We have high enrollment, it's over enrolled, and it's a successful program. So the partnerships and the innovation that they're doing to reach out to the larger communities is just phenomenal. And it doesn't stop there. We need to keep innovating and that's why we need to hear from you. <laughs> 